Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, we'll be discussing the planned protest and the potential security issues uh, around it. The Ikita State Police Command has been instructed to raid vulcanizers' shops and seize all unused tires to prevent their use in blocking roads during the upcoming nationwide protest starting August 1, 2024. A police directive warns divisional police officers, DPOs, that any area with burning fires during the protest will face sanctions. The directive follows intelligence reports suggesting that unused tires might be used to, by protesters to cause disruptions. The public relations officer of Ekiti State Police, Sunday Abutu, emphasized that while peaceful protest is a right, any form of protest involving violence or property destruction is unacceptable. Authorities, including the presidency and military, have cautioned against the protest, urging for national healing after previous unrest. Joining us to have a conversation, and this is Augustine Eka, as a security expert. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Yeah. All right. So we're talking about um, a nationwide protest slated for August 1. And now, <clears throat> the president has come out to say we will not condone any destruction of properties or, or even lives as well. And so many people have been against this protest because of insecurity. So they are saying um, there's insecurity in the land. Now is not the time um, for this protest. But I want to get your take. What are some key challenges you think they might have, especially when you look at the last one, which was the NSAS um, protest that gained so much momentum and then at some point, it felt like it was being hijacked and people started to, um, you know, destroy properties and even some lives were lost as well. So what are some key challenges you think we might have with this protest? Okay, I, I think this protest is more, is more violent prone than even the NSAS. Mm. Because the, the NSAS was like some few people, some people were aggrieved. By the way, they were ill-treated by the SARS divisions, uh, had to take their fight, or let me say, to protest peacefully. Because I, I, I witnessed that protest at two gate, it was peaceful. And I knew it was going to turn violent in a few days, because it was not uh, de-escalated. But in this case, it's something that affects a wider, in the nation as a whole. So we see that it's a protest that every, almost everyone will agree to be a part of this protest directly or indirectly everyone is feeling the economic impact so in this case it is very possible that it's not going to be peaceful this protest will not be peaceful the hijack is very possible and violent it could turn violent at any time hello sir i can hear you okay um, so you're saying it could turn violent at any time. So what can we do to mitigate this, to ensure that it doesn't turn violent? Because I don't think anyone, because even for the president to say that, you know what, we will not condone this, how can we ensure that this protest is as peaceful as possible? And now this is speaking to the organizers. Uh, first of all is to identify uh, the the key organizers of this protest. They need to find them out. They need to know where is their starting point. And like you talked, you mentioned intelligence from the, uh, from the government authorities. Yeah. They need to deploy their intelligence network. Uh, they need to find out who are these people and where will they start the protest from. And uh, like what we have in Ekiti, they have been able to uh, see certain areas, take some actions by putting away tires and all of those things that could be used. Uh, to for blockades, so uh, they need to spot where if it's Lagos, of course, Lagos is the heartbeat, and some other states like Abuja, Lagos, and Portacot, and some of those uh, key cities. They need to know where they will start this protest. Lagos, we can easily uh, uh, focus that Lagos is always from Ikeja, so they need to know, deploy their police network, deploy their intelligence, deploy the armed men, and even on armed people to ensure that they receive a status report on what is going on at all times. Mm. 
So uh, for the government now, um, I'm sure the reason why a lot of people want to come out to protest is they have certain concerns about the economy, um, about insecurity, about food inflation. So there's so many things, right? And then we've seen um, cases whereby they would just, it's almost like a threat, really, and tell you not to. So for the government officials, how do you think they can ensure that, um, you know, we, we're, we're at peace, sort of, because some opposition parties have even called on President Bola Metinubu to address Nigerians, and that might just be a way. But I want to get your take. What do you think the government should be doing right now? Fine, I know lots of people want to go out into the street to protest come August 1, but how can the government ensure that they start to douse the tension and, you know, just the momentum that this protest is gaining, they douse it and ensure that we do not even have it in the first place? Or even if we do, there's some form of respite that the people can have. Yes, I think communication is the major tool in the escalating crisis. Mm. And this should be applied at the right time, not the wrong time. Yeah. So this is the time, the, the target date has been set for, for a time period, I think almost a week now. And the advice they have given to President Tinubu to go ahead and start uh, uh, giving, addressing the nation is one aspect. And now... On the ground, they need to find out those guys are the, that are the key actors that would uh, spearhead this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this protest and also engage them. They have to be all around engagement in terms of discussions uh, to ensure that they de escalate. The de escalation should not be later. This is the right time to de escalate crisis and get people to the round table and discuss because everybody in Nigeria is affected. If you are not affected by insecurity, you are affected by the other side of the economy. So it is everybody uh, seems to buy into this protest. So the government, uh, are headed by our honorable president, our president uh, Tinubu, really need to do something right now. It's something, the clock is ticking. They need to do something immediately uh, so that we don't break into uh, total chaos. Because I'm not sure that we are going to come out. When we start, I'm not sure that we are going to come out with this. But people are really out for it. Mm. So if we look at other countries like um, Kenya um, and even Bangladesh, we've seen where protests arise. So for Kenya, um, the people said they did not want the finance bill and they were not going to pay for that. And we've, we've seen how it turned out. And in this, case is, in this case, it turned violent. So for Nigerians now, how do we balance that, um, you know, the security aspect and also have to express our, 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 our grievances the way we want to? How do we balance both of them to ensure that no lives will be lost and there would be no destruction of properties as well? Uh, just like we've, we've discussed over again, police play a key role in this. Mm. Uh, police are always uh, uh, the, the, the team that should be contacted. Even when you want to carry out a, a non-violent protest, you, are, you, should, you should indicate that with the Nigerian police mm. so that they can give you cover for that period and to ensure that they don't turn violent. So that is the major aspect of police and things like this. Mm. So I think but right now, whether police, I know from the intelligence, they will know which people, which people and where it will start from. They should be at that place even before the protest begins. So they should take charge of some of those streets and uh, the, the major roads that this protest will take place so that they will be able uh, to stop any form of violence. Yeah. So from what you're saying, um, instead of the government saying, do not protest, um, do not go out into the streets to, to protest, what they should be looking at is having to secure the places that this protest is going to happen. So ensuring that they're deploying people there to just make sure that everyone feels safe. But if they're saying, do not protest, it's almost like a threat and it's counterproductive. Is that what you're saying? Yes, of course. The government has to be proactive with their measures. You don't use only one measure to solve problems. Mm. Now, while the dialogue is going on, what if the dialogue fails? What if they say they will still protest? So what will the government be doing? Of course, the police have to be at those major rules and major streets to ensure to proactively mitigate any form of violence that will occur. So that's how to go about it. The police will still do their job, the military, the intelligence, or they will still be everywhere because if they allow it to go, 
this this kind of protest can even overthrow a government. I can tell you, mm -hmm. because uh, people are too aggrieved about it, and we don't know how 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 weaponized they are right now to carry on with this protest. Mm -hmm. We don't know how equipped they are, so which is why they have to do everything possible uh, to ensure that they de-escalate this crisis. Yeah. Well, I mean, with what you've just said, right, there's been so many people that have come out to um, give so many expert opinions, some of which, oh, we need to go back to a parliamentary system of government, another we need to do, we need to um, have like regional heads, another is let's probably go back to military, military regime. So there's been so many things with this now and where we currently are in Nigeria, what do you think should work for us? especially knowing that security is a huge challenge in our nation. So when you're talking about different or divergent, divergent opinions, are we looking at um, state police? Are we, what are certain measures that you think the government needs to start to look at to be able to address all of these issues that is even causing the protests in the first place? Uh, I think they already have a structure that we believe that if they build on it, it will work for them, or it will work for all of us. Uh, I, I, I was going through, and I saw that uh, Mr. President has signed into bill that the Southeast Commission. We have the Niger Delta and the, and the Northwest. I'm sure these are steps, even if they are denying the fact that they don't want to go the old way of a regional system, indirectly they are still uh, trying to to bring in this uh, kind of commission team uh, where you gather uh, people from the same region to solve their problems and to, to build economic advantage for themselves. I think that is one step that will, will, will help Nigeria to move forward because if they come as a, 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 a block, I think they will be able to harness their resource together and uh, solve their problem and then uh, move forward economically. But the way we are now, every state, and they are even asking, some people are even asking for more states, which is not the solution to our problems. Mm. But I'm sure that uh, this uh, commission thing that they have signed into law, they have signed into bill, I'm sure that these will help gradually to look inward into the problems of every region and then come up with solutions that will solve the problems in those areas. Be it security and be it economic challenges, I'm sure this will work for us. So I know that ha having the right to protest is a fundamental human right. So um, you should be able to go out and express yourself. You should be able to go out and express your concerns. And that's the beauty of democracy. Democracy is letting the government officials know what you want, how you want it, and you expect that to be done. Now, in going out to express yourself, which is probably going into the street to um, have a protest, how are you sure that you would be safe and secured? Because you, you would hear of cases, especially cases in the past, where people were being picked up, put in the, in the Black Maria, arrested, just because they were peacefully protesting. So how can Nigerians be sure that they will even be safe? And then you know that you're not going against the legal framework of the country. So on one hand, we have um, you know the authorities doing their job. And on the other hand, we have Nigerians still abiding by the guidelines and the rules for protesting? Yeah, I think uh, if, 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 if many people are going with different mindsets, mm. there are some that are going with a non-violent mindset, and there are some who are armed are going with a violent approach. And so it depends on the approach everyone is going with. So how do we have that balance? Going with. Yes. So uh, if, 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 you're, if you are non-violent, I'm sure that your approach, people will know. You know. Some people just carry placards and then that is not violent. Yeah. But I'm sure that there are some people who will be high with substance and they will even have weapons that they will want to fight in case they are being intimidated by law enforcement. And that's not the right approach right now. It should be non-violent. From my own perspective, it should be non-violent. Mm. Okay, so, but from your take now, do you think that this protest would be impactful? especially when it comes to expressing concerns. Do you think um, the government officials, the people who um, are in power, would actually listen and do what is right by the people? Uh, I'm sure even right now they are panicking. Mm. It's not as if they don't understand the problems of Nigeria. They no, do but, understand but the problems. Me, 
Pardon me, Hope Uzo Dima has said they don't know what Nigerians want and they don't know what we want with this protest. So they think it's a bad idea. We shouldn't go out into the streets. Um, they have made promises, but we don't know when all of those things are going to happen. So if you say that they don't know what we want, they are telling us that they don't know what we want. I think it's a self denial. Mm. Uh, because uh, we are the one wearing the shoes. They are somewhere there having it cool there and doing the things they like. So um, this impression that they give the people who are in the government quarters, I mean, the people at the top, they give the people down here that are supposed to give them the actual information of what's happening in the economy. They try to tell them that there's nothing happening. I think I've been privy to hear this, that even the former person sometimes don't even know what is going on. What, is the, what are the newspapers saying every day? They have their own kind of newspapers they read. I want to believe that except they have their own newspapers that they are reading, if they are reading the newspaper that you and I are reading, they should know that we are in crisis situation right now. So if you say they don't know what is going on, that means they have their own newspapers. They are following their own media. But if you are following the media that you and I are on right now, they should know that there is a problem in Nigeria. Hmm. So finally, um, obviously this process is going to start from little pockets and different places in the country. Um, let's just talk about the role of the leaders. So community leaders, um, people that are just high up there, how can they all ensure? For instance, even Lagos states, as we know, might have a peaceful protest. But for other states where you know that maybe the, the east, the southeast, where you know that things easily get violent, how can we all just ensure a peaceful protest and make sure that our voices are heard at the end of the day? I'm sure that uh, the way they do their campaigns for elections, they identify their key principles and they're able to mobilize them from the world level, mm. uh, even to the state level in the elections. Mm. These people are not, uh, they are not faceless. They know from the world level where the problem will start. They know people who are the key actors in every world level down to the state. Mm. So if they really want to support a peaceful protest, I'm sure they should start discussing from that level. The politicians, they know. Because one thing that I, I, I feel that the position should be involved is that this kind of protest can even uh, instigate some terrorist attack. Mm. And that's the, another, uh, another dangerous point we should look at. They can take advantage, not even normal criminals. But we know that real terrorists can take advantage of this protest in some areas and begin to bombard Nigeria. So we, we should know that right now we are not in a safe ground. Uh, let us look at the international uh, site where we have, uh, we have Mali, we have uh, Burkina Faso, we have Niger on one side, they are breaking away from ECOWAS. That also, there are factors that if we, don't, if we are not careful, we have a prison break in Niger. There's a prison break that was announced in Niger. And so these criminals, we don't know where they are. So with this peaceful, pro uh, peaceful protest or this protest that is going to take place, these criminals could take advantage and then do something terrible in Nigeria. So which is why, no matter how I grief we are, I still believe that we should find a way uh, to express ourselves other than violence. All right. Hopefully um, people go out come August 1 and then we... We really hope that it's going to be a peaceful protest. We hope that it would not be hijacked. We hope that all of our security forces will um, do all they can to ensure that they douse the tension and just allow people to express themselves the best way they can peacefully. Augustine, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, we'll be speaking with Augustine Ega. He's a security expert, and we've just been looking at the potential security and threats facing the planned protests. We'll go on a short break now, and when we return, we'll be discussing the fact that the Senate has invited Dangote, NMPCL, and others over alleged economic sabotage. Please stay with us.